Konnichiwa, no show your boy guy back on our video and today we guys we're doing another overly sarcastic productions video. Uh, the last one we did was over Hades and I forgot what was it, Hades and Per phone or something like that, I think it was. But um yeah, you guys wanted me to actually react to two more of their videos. So this is the first one. Um history summarized the Maya, the hashtag and the Inca. So yeah, um so let me in the video, so let's get right to it. Guys. So Let's subscribe on the video. Excuse me. Let's subscribe on the video. The notification bell is all. So me know if I make a every time I make a future upload. Um, yeah, hit the notification bell. Click all us as well. Uh, follow the TikTok page at Incognito Ace. And um, yeah, try to get to uh two K subscribers and more guys. So let's just get to it, man. I uh, hope you guys are enjoying the content. Like, say so you guys want to leave me a comment down below. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know if you guys want to react me to react to something else. If you guys have something some in mind, share the video with your circle cool stuff so we get this video out to more people. And yeah, let's get right into it, guys. So play. Alrighty. Let's cover the great civilizations of the New World, from the time before the Old World made the New World new by killing most of the New World and reconstructing it to be way more Old Worldy. Yeah, that's a mouthful. Anyway, three great civilizations. The Inca, the Aztec, and the Maya. The Maya, the Inca, and the Aztec? Um, okay. Aztec, Maya, Inca? Hey, nice. Okay, hey, no. next problem. What's the difference between them? Because before I started researching this video, I honestly couldn't tell you either, because so often their stories are only told insofar as they relate to the Spanish conquest of the Americas. So we hear a lot about human sacrifices and smallpox, but not so much anything else, and they all kind of blend together. But these societies were highly complex and had their own histories long before the conquistadors showed up, and they were also completely unique and distinct from each other. The Maya have been around on the Yucatan Peninsula for basically ever, and were subsistence farmers for almost the whole time. But their great cities mostly disappeared before the Spanish ever arrived. The Aztec Empire was born from a triple alliance of city-states in central Mexico, and they built up an amazing capital city in Tenochtitlan. Unlike the Maya, the Aztecs only lasted for about a hundred years uh, before the Spanish wiped them out. <laughs> and finally, the Inca were from South was. America, not but. Mexico, and they lived almost entirely in the western coastal mountains for over a century before the Spanish showed up. So we're dealing with a decent amount of variety here, and it's part of what makes it really cool. So before we jump into this, we should also take a look at what sources we're working with. Archaeology in most cases is pretty good, but in this specific instance, we're also lucky enough to have decent written accounts. The Maya and the Aztecs both had pictographic writing, although it took us a good long while before we could actually translate any of it. First, we figured out numbers in the Mayan calendar, and then in the mid and late 1900s, we were able to translate more of the Maya script and discover that their writing system was syllabic rather than alphabetic. And lucky for us, it turns out that a lot of the texts contain dynastic records, so the Maya actually recorded their own history, which is really cool. The reason we still have a lot of Mayan writing is because a lot of it was written on surfaces like temple walls, ceramics, and the occasional staircase. The Aztec writing system is a trickier topic though, since the Aztecs weren't quite around for long enough to create a fully fleshed out writing system. From the surviving codices we have, we know that they certainly liked writing, but I say surviving because Spanish Christians burned almost all of their texts before incidentally also murdering almost everybody. Which, Goodness, by man. the way, anyone in any situation who decides that burning information is a good idea is just being a dick. There's no two ways about that. <laughs> Luckily, we still Actually, know though. a decent amount about the Aztecs on account of Spanish Bats. writings about them. Meanwhile, the Inca themselves didn't actually have a writing system. They instead had this really cool thing called a quipu, a collection of knotted cords of different lengths and colors used to record and convey information. Quipus contained all sorts of numerical information, like dates and events and whatnot, but we still mostly can't decipher them, so it's a mystery. Our other information on the Inca comes, day we came again, to the mostly from the Spanish. So, are the Spanish accounts of these civilizations biased and or more likely to portray things in a more negative or exoticized light? Probably in some cases, yeah. But they're the best we have, so they'll have to do. Now that we've got that sorted, let's go one by one and look at some proper history. The Aztec and the Inca are actually relative latecomers to the party, as they really only came along in the centuries immediately prior to the Spanish arrival. Those two are contemporaneous with the Renaissance. So it is super inaccurate to label those two as way ancient like we subconsciously tend to do. The Maya, however, are crazy ancient. 
but not quite as crazy ancient as the Olmec civilization, Olmec? the first fancy civilization in all of Mesoamerica, which flourished for 2,000 years between 1500 BC and about 400 AD. Now that is old. While we have a fair amount of Olmec art and statuary thanks to our old pal archaeology, they're still decently mysterious, which makes sense given how old they are. Slightly less old than the Olmecs is the central Mexican city of Teotihuacan, which is similarly shrouded in mystery and uniquely cool for how huge and well-designed it was. Its most famous building, the Pyramid of the Sun, was built in the first century AD, but aside from the building remains in the city, we really don't know a lot about it, like who that's built it or who day. lived there. The presence of some shattered right statues points to evidence of some Wonder. variety of popular uprising near the end of the city's yeah, life, think. but still, not a lot to go on. Also, it might have been a trade empire? Again, we don't really know, but it's big, it's old, it's cool, and it was probably the inspiration for most of the subsequent Mesoamerican culture as we understand it now, so it's worth a mention. Anyway, back to the Maya. Agriculture in the Yucatan Peninsula developed in the 2nd millennium BC, and by about 500 BC they had huge and awesome cities. In the centuries following 250 AD, the Maya were out in full force, building giant monuments covered in writing, connecting cities with trade, and just generally being an awesome civilization. This is impressive because it's just kinda cool, but also because it was really hard to live in the Yucatan Peninsula. It's an exposed coral reef that's basically impossible to farm conventionally, so they had to practice slash and burn agriculture where they slash down vegetation and then burn it to infuse the soil with enough nutrients to sustain crops for a few years before moving on to another plot of land and letting the old forest regrow. Wow, Adding to the trickiness, really? rivers don't really form in limestone, so the only naturally available sources of water were sinkholes, called cenotes, so a lot of really intricate hydraulic engineering went into making the Yucatan yeah, livable. They, they and if that all really, sounds labor-intensive, really it's because it is. Like it's a minor yeah, miracle that the Maya were able to build the kinds of settlements they did with such inhospitable land. So while the Maya spent the centuries between 250 and 900 AD trying not to die of hunger and thirst on a regular basis, they were practicing their religion, which is really interesting in how heavily cyclical it is. They believe that the world went through cycles of creation and destruction, and most of their deities have some hand in the cyclicality of the universe. The Maya also thought that no beginning or end was definite, and that when someone died they went on a journey through the underworld and the heavens before showing back up on Earth, which may serve to explain why they were so chill with sacrifice. The sacrificing was also predominantly a priestly measure to delay the rebirth of the world and the collapse of the world as they knew it. But while their mythology may have thought that nothing has an end, history had other plans for the Maya. A series of droughts contributed to a gradual decline of Maya culture in the southern Yucatan Peninsula. Cities were mostly abandoned due to a likely mix of too many people and too little water. In the centuries after, the Maya gravitated towards the northern Yucatan, where water was more consistently available. Cities like Chichen Itza and Mayapan became the dominant urban centers in the later centuries. Even still, those cities also gave way in the 12th and 15th centuries respectively, so by the time the Spanish showed up in the 16th century, there wasn't much left to conquer. So that's the Maya for you. Real slow burn on that one. The Aztec to the northwest had a much faster history. In the 12th and 13th centuries, a series of independent city-states began cropping up around the Texcoco Lake Valley in hey, West Mexico. Hey, say any of those One such group cities. of people, the Mexica, as <laughs> they called themselves, hey, settled into an island in the middle of the lake and founded names. the city of Tenochtitlan in 1325. The city and the culture developed and spread over the next century as trade increased and cultural and religious influence grew. In 1428, the Mexica formed an alliance with two other nearby peoples, and the new fangled Aztec Empire began to expand and their territory and conquer their neighbors. This wasn't terribly bothersome for them because their warriors were really skilled. Not only did they conscript all adult males for fighting, but they used warriors from allies and conquered territories too. Plus, their elite jaguar and eagle warriors were especially fearsome. In the course of jaguar conquering the majority eagle. of southern Mexico, Tenochtitlan, the capital, became chain. only more and more splendid. Much like Venice, the city was an island, and it was dotted with canals in addition to its huge temples. It's been estimated to have been several times as big as contemporary London, approximately the size of late medieval Paris. Yeah, that's big. And, I mean, look at it. That is one pretty city. The Aztec also played a game that the Maya were known for, called Pocatok. The game apparently involved getting a rubber ball into a high hoop without the use of hands or feet. The game was highly ritualized and meant a lot to the people who watched and played it. Wow, hands the end of the game involved the some variety of sacrifice, but we're not quite sure who it would have been or for what purpose. 
Unlike the gradual decline of I'm minus really cities, the Aztecs game, lasted right up until the Spanish get, arrived. Hey, and since the Aztecs, unlike out. the Maya, were an empire, that meant that the Aztecs ruled over a lot of people who thought that they were massive knobs. So when Spain showed up and decided to take everything the Aztecs owned, and also their lives, they stoked rebellions among I'm the Aztecs' really often curious. annoyed subjects. Uprisings plus smallpox plus guns made for a fairly quick imperial turnover. But while blood was flying everywhere in Mexico, there was an interesting debate going on in Spain. See, while genocide definitely happens during the New World's conquest, some people were debating its merits and whether or not it was justified. A guy named Sepulveda argued that the Aztecs were bad because of how much sacrifice they did, and Spain had the moral authority to kill them in retribution. But a guy named De Las Casas argued that the Aztecs were their own people with their own ways, and it wasn't for Spain to step in and decide what was right and wrong. It's really neat to see what types of arguments each side was providing, Me? as it gives us an interesting insight into the Spanish colonial mindset. The conquistadors are rightly given a lot of flack for all of their conquisting and genociding, but we should recognize that the morality of genocide was at least on their minds. It's a start, right? With Mexico covered, let's As well, so that dude ain't got no shoes or no the feet. The Inca Empire began with the small tripping. kingdom of Cusco in the mountains of Peru, and it started expanding in 1438 to ultimately cover much of South America's west coast. Seriously, this thing was huge. It might have even been the world's biggest empire at the time. Even more impressive, it was multi-ethnic, and it incorporated people through diplomacy as well as outright conquest. The Inca government was cool. very specifically formulated and highly efficient, but the Inca, like we said, had no writing. So, well done. If having no writing was tricky, imagine what it was like building huge stone cities on the tops of mountains with no wheels. Yeah. The Inca hauled everything up those mountains with llamas and people. If mountainous cities weren't crazy enough on their own, the Inca also had a network of hundreds of suspension bridges made Yo, only from wood they did all that, that on all foot like the that with llamas Their fiber stuff? working was so refined that they could even make seaworthy boats out of it. The Inca infrastructure, which is amazingly well adapted to the mountain-covered coast, is almost entirely a result of their excellent That's central wow. government. Terrace farming was also a oh, huge factor in the ability of the Inca to live in such mountainy terrain. Also, also, in the middle of all this, they figured out how to freeze-dry food, and were also performing consistently successful brain surgery. So there's that. Yo, Much like with the Aztecs, the Spanish crazy. showed up in the 1500s with intents to wreck shop and colonize everything. And they did. An Incan civil war and the outbreak of smallpox immediately prior to the Spanish arrival certainly made conquering easier for them. In the centuries after, Spain would import tons upon tons of gold and silver from the New World, and absolutely destroy their economy with inflation, sending them on a lovely one-way ride to geopolitical irrelevance within a century. I'm not saying karma, but it kinda seems like karma, don't you think? Anyway, that's Mesoamerica for you. Maya, I mean, Aztec, in and Inca. Hey, there we go! Yeah, that's, uh... That's pretty interesting. Uh, like Aztec and Inca, bro. The Inca, that really shocked me. I forgot I haven't looked at that in a minute. Like I said, cause I haven't um, which I haven't um, looked at this in like my history books and all like that since you know I was in school, obviously, and I've been been graduated like years upon years ago. I I really forgot like the Inca. I I don't, I don't recall that with the Inca as far as them living in like okay so obviously they have the mountain area of like that coastal area of south america and like i didn't know they literally built all that literally with just llama and people walking up those things not no wheels not like that literally up and down those things with people in, in llamas and then they was building boats that's nuts that's crazy and then on top of that you had those other people that had like they was resor resourceful with the crops and everything where they would slash and burn and then just um, use that for like as long as they could until like they would have to move to another area to let that air to like the area just move from let that re you know re grow itself back out before they can move like that's hey that's crazy that's crazy anyway um guys like I say first thing sure about that below would lead to only sarcastic productions channel it's your boy and Kyle like subscribe on the video share very good circle stuff comment down below your thoughts and everything like that, guys. And without further ado, boy, you gotta come out. Peace.